The story from last week in Wild Rose MX Park in Calgary was Ruts! Capital R Ruts! Jimmy Nelson going for the lead early in the first MX2 moto goes down. Eric Nye takes the lead. Oh, and then another rut collects Ben Evans. Tucker Hibbert was on the prowl looking for the lead, and he takes his first MX2 West moto win of the season. Kyle Beaton was the man on the track in the second moto, though. Passing his way up to second. Then he samples, and then he battles back with a huge inside line on Gray Davenport. Nice super cross style for Beaton. And then makes a move on Ben Evans to get into second place. Nelson caps off the day with the second MX2 moto win to the MX1 class. Another red flag situation. Mitch Cook and Jeff DeMent go down hard in the international section, but we go back to racing. Colton Fasciotti inside on number 50. Josh Wood takes the lead. Andrew Boleyn with a huge sampler. How about Michael Willard on the outside of number nine, Chuck Mesley. Fasciotti gets the first moto win. Holly Carpenter out early in moto number two. And number 25, Tyler Medallion was looking good until the chain came off. Blair Morgan with a ton of passes here going by Phillips. Then passing Woods to get on the podium, Polly Carpenter wins the overall in MX1. to the Wastelands on Vancouver Island, Nanaimo, British Columbia. This is round six of the 2007 Monster Energy Motocross Nationals. Mark Travers and Brian Coster in the booth. Fabs, looks like we got a great day here. A little cloudy this morning, but the sun is supposed to come out. I sure hope it does. It's been a great series so far. Today is round four and the final round of the MX2 Western Championship. We're gonna show you some of the key players vying for that title. Leading the MX2 West Championship is defending champion Jimmy Nelson. Three wins so far out of six motos, right? He has been on the gas. Ben Evans here, a newcomer to the series. He's got a moto win on his Honda. First privateer in the top three. And finally, Derek Nye on that KTM has been ultra fast. Two guys on the outside looking in. Number 29, Gray Davenport on that rock star Suzuki. And number 20, Kyle Beaton on the Clearbrook Yamaha. Both guys have podium potential. Ryan, let's get familiar with the point standing. Well, you can see Tucker Hibbert, six. He's got a moto win, but the DNF and Morton has put him out. Beaton and Davenport both an outside chance of making the box. To the MX1 class after five of nine rounds. Of course, Carpenter with that stranglehold. Loving Dubé in second. Boy, has he been consistent. Mesley crashed in practice. He won't be racing this day. And look out for Lockhart and Keith. Okay, fabulous. They call this track the Wastelands. Cut into the side of a mountain. It really is a different track and a different layout. Yeah, there's a lot of shale on this track. Look at those hard bits. They trucked in a bunch of nice dirt here, but during the day, it kind of gets pushed off to the side like so, and it is like a rock underneath. Wood chips, there's plenty of pulp and paper mills around here, but it's those rocks, rocks, and more big rocks. Talk about roost. You want hand guards and at least a roost guard or shoulder and chest protector on this rugged terrain. High bank turns, kind of like Supercross traps and these long ruts keep the riders on their toes, as Galdi likes to say. Fabs, the jump faces are going to stay consistent today, but there has been two changes on the track. The big horseshoe is gone, and they put this high bank corner in, which I'm not sure about, but the riders are using the far outside, and of course the whoops are gone. Now two tabletops, that's where the finish line is. Okay, out onto the track with the Scott Helmet Cam and Pico Pierce Chamberlain. Yeah, number 40 on a privateer Yamaha coming through one of these S bends. A big drop right here. They changed the track, put that S bend in to make it a little safer because it was a little blind coming down. Pico comes up short on one of these tabletops through a nice high bank burn. You can see on the inside a really nice line coming up to this big drop away floater. Lots of passing here. Just pin it and land up here. Pico a little conservative here on Saturday morning. The track will be different from tomorrow's race, but not a lot. 
now a problem here. Another bank corner, but we got these low-lying areas where the water pools and those long ruts form. This is a kind of an auction roller section here. Some of the riders actually tripling into this last little bump. Lada passing again with those supercross style bags. The old whoops are gone in favor of these two tabletops. I am a big fan of the whoops, but they figured it was a little too gnarly for outdoor style racing. They're gone. Here's a split course here. The riders can go high on the outside, catch some air, or keep it pinned on the inside, get the traction down. Another 180, a whole lot of 180s on this track. Pico going wide, pin it top gear down this straight. It's a lot of fun. With number 149, Kyle McGlynn, the only intermediate sitting in the top 10 in the MX2S. Kyle, a great season so far, turning a lot of heads, yet still with those yellow plates. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we've been, been trying hard, you know, doing our best, and it seems to be going good for us. So we came in, you know, with the expectation to have fun. And that's, that's the way it is. We got seventh in Morton, and we were like, great, you know, let's, let's keep on trucking. It didn't matter if we got 20th in the next race or whatever, but it seems like we've been getting solid results, and we're, we couldn't be happier about that. We're just doing our thing and having fun. There's a peak of Kyle Bean with the fastest qualifying lap time. Stick around for more action. Kawasaki's number 37, Brock Hoyer, sitting ninth in points in the MX2S. I would say that's a quiet ninth for you, Brock. You had showing a lot of speed, but not necessarily getting into those top five battles like you used to last year. Talk to us about your season so far. Yeah, you know, I had kind of a rough winter, got hurt, and uh, just been trying to get, recover from that all year. The foot injury, it's been uh, kind of painful, but yeah, just working through it. Got a good team behind me, and just have to keep working and just push through and try to do a good finish this weekend for sure. This is the Wastelands, Nanaimo, British Columbia. The first MX2 moto will be brought to you by Extreme Motocross Apparel. Boys are on the line, Brian. A long start. Most of the fast guys are tucked in the middle towards that gate. It's kind of a dog leg first turn. So the guy's kind of in the middle to the inside. You have a straight shot. Some of the guys on the far outside have a real sharp turn to uh, negotiate. But the gate is down, Traz, and they're off. Coming into the first corner. Remember, they're going to get the whole shot before they go under the bridge. And it looks like number 235 on that Carl Cycles Honda. That is Ben Evans with the Royal Distributing Oh, yeah. I believe that's Ben's first whole shot here in Canada. Oh, we have Carnage, oh. Andy Milan, some other intermediate riders. Those are the yellow backgrounds with the black numbers signifying intermediate or pro-am riders. That was number 28, Tyler Hunt, taken out by Dwight Dockendorf. How about that handle, Brian? Number 330 on the Cowie, back to our lead. Number 235, Ben Evans on that privateer Honda. Davenport in second with a great start. Davenport on a charge, able to clear that tabletop, the last tabletop in the corner. Very difficult on the 250F. That tells me that Davenport's on the move and has Evans' number. With the boys funneling through the Scott Lockoff cam, Urquhart with a great start. How about Moffin Byron up in the top five? McGlynn as well. The battle for the lead is intense. First time for Evans on this track, Brian. He looks pretty good. Very comfortable on the hard pack. But Davenport last year, Travis, did very well. He podiumed both motos his first time on this track. Oh, Brian, number 32, Eric Nye, went down in that first corner commotion. He's way back in the pack. Moffenbauer with some problems before the tabletop. We've got guys with issues early. Back to the battle for third place. Urquhart in third, and he's got Jimmy Nelson hot on his heels. Jimmy knows this track well. He wants to get out of Urquhart's roost and uh, get close to the leaders. He doesn't want those leaders to break away, Travis. Oh, Urquhart goes down. Brian, we talked about how slippery this track is in all those corners. You move away the top, so it's like an ice rink underneath. Urquhart down, Nelson in third. How about number 37, Brock Hoyer on that leading edge. Kawasaki goes by Clay. Oh, and then Belin goes down. Slippery track, Brian. Andrew Belin washes the front end out. I love that pass that Hoyer made, though. Super aggressive, low on the inside. He's on the move. The battle for the lead is intense. Look at Davenport searching for lines. Brian, we talk about how riders can go high and low in the both corners at flat track around these babies. Kyle Beaton right now really making up ground traps. He's sitting like sixth place, and he is moving. Now the battle for the lead intensifying. Davenport is aggressive. Oh. Look at this. He's showing a wheel to Evans. And, and uh, Davenport taking different lines in every corner. I'm loving this racing. 
Remember, Davenport came up here as a privateer last year. Brian finished on the box, showed some stuff, and got on that Cowie team. Moving to Suzuki this year, he looks really fast on this bike. Triples into that corner, and this is where we see those Supercross-style block passes. Brian, and he executes one on Evans. Davenport ultra-confident on this track. I think he's going to pull away. He's been faster. This corner here, ultra-thrilling through the mechanics area, just tapped on the gas. Uh-oh, the man Mountain Coots has got some issues up in that rhythm section. Let's see if he can get that bike going. Let's check our lead. There's Davenport in the lead. A scant second and a half to Evans in second place. And number one, Jimmy Nelson, is coming up right behind. Yeah, Jimmy's on the move as well. But Jimmy also oh. knows. Oh. Where he's sitting in the points. Oh. Oh. That is going to hurt. A big facial for number 501, <laughs> Ryan Miller. He goes right into the tires. You better believe that one had to hurt. But he is back up. That battle for second place is really tight. Nelson liking that inside line, Brian. There's options coming into the corner, but obviously the inside line is the best one. Oh, Nelson is into second place. Jimmy with the inside, outside, making it work. Tripling here, Ben Evans not tripling. Maybe he's gonna try that next lap after seeing his rivals make a time now. Thinking about the championship, Brian, Evans had the lead in this moto, and now he's back to third place and just gets passed by the guy who he wanted to beat. That has gotta be a tough one. Check out this battle. Number 620, Brad Nodden, and number 65, Chris Foster. This is for 20th, Brian. I've been liking the way young Foster's been riding. He's a young, fast Canadian. Look at that inside line. Beautiful. Battles like this all the way down to 40th place. 40 guys on the track. Top 20 get points. So everyone wants to get a top 20 position. Evans taking a peek on Nelson on the inside. This is for second place, Brian, and the championship. Love the way Nelson's riding, though. Very aggressive. But yet conservative at the same time, he doesn't want to go down. What a great move, and you can just see it's war out there. Lappers, roost, dust, rocks, hard work. Beaten, made his way up the fourth, a local boy. Posting the fastest lap time. Davenport oh, though, Travs, he is oh, on a mission. Look at the legwork through the sweeper. He has got that rock star Suzuki taped. <laughs> Number 43, Andrew Berlin goes down again, Brian. He had made his way back up to 11th place. He is the factory rider for a day for Racer X Canada today. Uh oh, the battle for the lead has tightened up. Nelson on the inside. Does he have Davenport through the lappers? This is one of my favorite parts of the track, Brian. Davenport up on to the tabletop. Nelson with the outside line. Jimmy looking around. I also really like this section, especially that little sweeper coming in where Hoyer made that pass. Oh, oh Jimmy gets cross-rutted in one of the load sections. Has a bit of a moment. He wants to get oh, by. Look at that crisscross slingshot action. And Davenport closes the door. Say what you want about this track, Brian. It provides great racing every single year, and the reason for it is speed and the width of these corners. Yeah, for sure, Trash Davenport now relegated to second. They're taking completely different oh. lines on this race. Track. Huge contact oh, oh, oh. up in that rhythm section, beaten on the outside, moves into third place. What a pass. Here's the Nelson pass for the lead. There's a very aggressive crisscross. Jimmy comes in riding the front end hard on the front brakes, or he's going to tag Davenport. Davenport steps over the berm right there. That was his mistake. He could have held on to first, but he skipped out of the berm. Jimmy Nelson, he's a capitalist. Jimmy, 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 back where he belongs. In the lead, you are correct, Brian as we get back to Davenport in second place and Beaton has made up a ton of real estate and is right on his heels. The crowd is going nuts for BC Native. Kyle Beaton, especially through the two gear oh. gardens. What a block pass on Davenport. The exact same move Davenport executed on Evans. Boom, in your face, Kyle Beaton. Did you see Davenport with a foot out? He actually <laughs> booted Beaton out of the way so he didn't make the contact. Awesome. Look at Nelson up through that rhythm section, up onto the tabletop in the lead. You know, Brian, as far as the championship goes, he needed to win this moto, and he is doing just that. Doing what he's paid for for Toyota Yamaha, Blackfoot Direct Fox Racing out front and poised to be the champion. Oh. A battle for 19th. There's a guy you like, Foster, on the Man Mountain League Coots, and Coots on the Honda, a huge guy for the 250F. I love the way riders are able to crisscross and go inside, outside. Foster with some great lines out there, and you know how hard it is to move Coots out of the way. Jimmy Nelson <laughs> on his final approach. <laughs> yeah, Coots. He is a big man, and they're just inside the top 20. Here we go, a nice triple Jimmy is on cruise control, motoring in to take the checkers. First photo Nanaimo, an awesome battle. Beaton coming back from 11th. Ben Evans and Hibbert have a good ride. McGlynn, 6th. That is awesome. But Eric Nye, he's suffering in 10th. Wait, wait, you don't didn't feel good when I came around that first turn about fifth or sixth and I seen Ben in the lead, but uh, you know, I just put my head down and uh, tried to charge, you know. Uh, 
I was making up a little bit of time on him there at the beginning, and then uh, they faded a little bit at the end there, and I was able to get by him, and then uh, Kyle started coming on there at the end. I could see him crossways on the track, so I just tried to be smart those last couple laps and uh, do enough to win it. MX1 boys warming up. Stick around. The gate drops next. Once a season, you have a great round. We see all over the place battling and doing your thing, but it's like one time each year you bust it out large. What do you think that? Why do you think that is? Uh, you know, probably a combination of things. Luck, uh, you know, had a good bike setup maybe that week. Uh, got the right, you know, had a good diet that week. Uh, right amount of time on the cycle, bicycling, um, things like that. You know, you know, uh, you know, the guys in the rigs, they seem to know what it takes to put together weekend and week out. And uh, for us guys, I guess, privateers, I think that's our biggest struggle is uh, finding out, you know, what works, you know, from week to week. The big boys are on the line in this first MX1 moto will be brought to you by Yamaha Motor Canada. Ryan, I love when the big boys get out there. 40 MX1 bikes and they really know how to tear this track up. The Monster 30 board is up. These bikes, 450 is a lot more horsepower than in the MX2 class. And these guys really hook up once they hit the dirt. Concrete start pad here, Brian. The gate is down. 40 riders bundling into the chicane. Looks up number 10, Colton Fasciati. With that inside gate pick, and he gets that royal distributing hole. Shot. Fasciati right beside the box. A straight shot right to the first turn. And it works for a masterfully. Hooked it up to that 450 Yamaha. Now the whole pack looks like they're coming through clean. Two Suzuki's in the top four. Looks like number 50, Josh Woods, in second place. And how about the start for number 72, Drew Clegg? He's on a tear, Brian. A privateer from Alberta. Love that stuff. How about that, Travis? You interview him, and he's sitting in third. He's got his mojo flowing. But Josh Woods right now, he was on the podium last week in Calgary. <laughs> Look at the air time <laughs> off that set of tabletops. No wonder the spectators love that spot. He cased that jump slightly, but then that shot him into the high part of the berm. That is a scary part of the track. You really have to time out that jump. And a good start for Jeff Gibson. Like to see him in fourth place. He's having a peek upside of Clegg. He's taking his time right now using the same line, sweeping wide. He's not familiar with seeing Drew Clegg out there. Clegg cuts the inside. Whoa, Clegg was very nice there. He could have just uh, shown Gibson a little bit of a tap action. We've been talking about how slippery this track is. Both of those riders tentative as they came out of that corner, and they're tentative coming in with number 10, Colton Fasciati, with the lead, Brian. Colt's got a lot of laps on this track, Brian. You give him the lead, and look out. He's got his head down, and he is checking out right now, Trav, pulling away from the field. The battle, 10th through 15th, is intense. There's number 30 keys to that machine, Honda. But look at this, 101, Paul Carpenter, our points leader. He's making moves, but he's still outside the top 10. Carpenter was not comfortable in practice yesterday, Brian. This is a different type of track. The guys that know this track tend to do better. Look at NorCal on the outside, carrying some speed, but it looks like Clegg's bouncing a little bit, Brian. Maybe the privateer suspension kicking in. Yeah, definitely. Plus, with a great start, he could be riding a little oh. over his head. He's making a lot of small mistakes, but gaining invaluable experience running with these big name MX1 riders. Number 14, Jeff Northup, looking good on the outside, makes the pass on Clegg. Back to our leader, number 10, Colton Fasciati. Uh oh we got a rider down just past the finish line. That's number 92, Josh Penner, and he looks out. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's keep updated on Penner. Let's hope he's okay. See, they take the whoops away. They're still crashing there. Four riders looking for seven places. They get into the motovan corner. Look at the start for number 40, Pico Chamberlain. And Carpenter's on the outside of number four, Simon Holman. Holman's looking very good. He's known as a sand rider, but he's riding the Sinanaimo track well today. Josh Woods. See that enduro style through the ruts. You have to look to the end of the rut. Woods in second, but the battle for seventh is intensifying as number four, Simon Holmans, on the Simon Holmans Racing Yamaha, is catching Pico Pierce Chamberlain on that white 450 Yamaha as well. One rider ahead of this package is number 36, Johnny Montes, who a great start for him. But look at number four, Simon Holmans on the inside as he busts Pico's choppers. Holton Fasciati still in the lead, freestyling out there or something, Brian. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, showing off to the crowd a bit. He's enjoying a big lead, and he knows this track so intimately well. 
working for him big time here. And like you said earlier, this terrain takes a lot to get used to. Something's wrong, Brian. Uh -oh. He doesn't uh -oh. have his mojo. He's now waving. Pointing. He's pointing. Travers, look at that back rim. Could be a flat. And this course is known for flats, both front and rear. To the top rhythm section for seventh. Look at the drive for Carpenter. Holy mackerel. Two riders in one position, Brian, as he moves into seventh. Carpenter flat lands the tabletop, bounces into the corner. Doesn't really hurt you too much to do that. Of course, you want to get a nice smooth landing. And yes, there it is, the flat tire. The Blackwood guys working feverishly to get Cole back out on the track. But he is going to lose a lot for sure. Oh! Oh, Blair Morgan, he is way out on the infield. Ooh, and he's getting up slow, Travis. A huge get off over that tabletop, Brian. You see him shaking all that shale out of his jersey. Number 50, Josh Woods, now in the lead. Brian, he has won on this track before. That was back in 2000 on the two-wheel Kawasaki. The day he beat Doug Dubach, the same season, he won the 125 East. That's correct. He was only 16 years old back then. So Woods, no stranger to racing a can. A beautiful line for Gibson. Tripling wonderfully off the tabletop, but NorCal, look at NorCal up the inside. Landed on the top of the table, landed set up better, able to get to the inside. Wicked block pass for the original. I thought Gibson was going to carry more speed through that high berm, and you can slingshot out of that corner, but that line on the inside was great, and NorCal got right in it and made the pass for second place. Uh oh, number 72, Drew Clegg has got number 101, Pauly Carpenter, all over him, Brian, and this is for fifth place. Unbelievable how Clegg has been able to stay up front for this long. I can't believe it's taken Carpenter so long to reel in this pack. Carpenter not 100% comfortable on this track, and with JSR out, he has got a huge points lead, so he's riding smart. Oh no, number 50, Josh Woods has stalled his bike in the lead. Carpenter just got by, and that means Woods is relegated to fifth place. Brian, that is the second time in two rounds that number 50, Josh Woods has stalled his bike with number 10, Colton Fassietti, unlapping himself past second place. Good point. Maybe Woods needs to look into a slipper style clutch if he's stalling that 450 RMZ. Ryan Lockhart battling with East Coast rival Johnny Montez. This is for 13th place, and these two have been swapping positions lap after lap. Into the rhythm section. Look at NorCal. Looks terrific on that Denny's whole shot Kawasaki, who has the lead right now, Brian, with Woods dropping back. The battle for six is in 10th. A pair of RTR KTMs. Phillips up the inside of Dubé. Dubé hanging tough. Part of our action. Phillips has it for now. Through the Scott Lockoff cam, Brian. Dubé had a problem with that motor that's in that KTM early. Decided to run with it. They found some shavings in the oil. Yeah, that is scary as a rider when you're coming up to some of these big launchers. You need the confidence in your motorcycle. Dubé able to block that out of his mind. Racing well with New Zealand's Phillips. The battle for second, though, on the last lap. Holmans has reeled in. Gibson, big time this lap, Travs. Simon Holmans with a very poor start to the season. Brian, starting to show the old Simon Holmans old on the podium right now. NorCal in the lead, but the battle for second is not going away. Wow, is he ever caught up? We've got half a track left. This track starting to get rough. We can see the braking bumps and acceleration bumps, which is a good thing. It rained this morning. It's starting to get really hot and humid out there. This track, not traditionally a demanding circuit, not like some of the other tracks we have. The rider's able to push right to the checkers here. The thing I like about this track, Ryan, it's about line choice. You pick the right line, you're going to be able to make a pass in the corner. Number 14, Jeff Northrup, the original NorCal, takes the checkered flag and wins his first MX1 Moto in Canada. Welcome back to the Monster Energy Motocross Nationals. Holman's getting congratulated his first time on the podium. He finished his third, a great race for him. Carpenter manages fourth, Woods after the stall. Fifth, Phillips and Dume do well. Kyle Keast and Drew Clegg, a great moto. I'm telling you what, Original, we had that interview. This is it, last round of here out west, and uh, you took care of business, man. Yeah, you know, I actually really didn't even know I um, had the moto win until I pulled off the track. Um, you know, Fasciati got by me, and uh, I actually thought I was in third, and I feel like I guess he had a flat tire, but, um, you know, it worked out in my favor, and came across the line in first place, and, you know, I've been working hard, and, uh, yeah, maybe the interview was good luck, you know, so maybe I need to see you guys more often. Jeff, a great start for you, and a very smart race yeah, to the very end, holding off Simon Holmans for second place. Yeah, thanks a lot, you know, I just got the best start I possibly could out there, made some, uh, 
Bit of pass real quick. It was kind of riding a little race out there. You know, it was tough. The track was really deteriorating out there. It was tough to put in perfect laps out there. And that's what you just needed to do. The track was uh, it was pretty tough, and um, I just tried to ride my own little race, and I uh, just rode smart, you know. That's what we talked about back in the pits, and that's, I tried to do my best at it. To round four of five of the Suzuki Women's Nationals here in Nanaimo, the last Western round. And these girls get going pretty fast on this track. I better believe it. And early on, we had a great battle between number 52, Heidi Cook, and number one, Jolene Van Voot, who went down. The thing about this track, again, Brian, a much faster track than we saw last week in Calgary. And Heidi Cook was taking care of business. <laughs> she rides so well, mentored by her brother, Mitch. And you can tell, there is uh, Jocelyn Cologne, number seven on the Suzuki, doing really well. She's having a heck of a battle with number three there. Calgary's own Jessica Boston. Coming on in the Western Rounds is number six, Missy Hackett. She finished second in the first moto and second in the second moto and moved into the top three in points with the ladies. Number four, Camille Baker was looking pretty fast on this track as well. And how about number 61, Amber Giroux with a nice line on the inside. There's Heidi with the clean sweep. Missy Hackett goes 2-2. Jolene Van Voot sounds for third. Let's talk about your riding style and some of the things that we've seen so far. Obviously a very skilled, talented rider, very smooth. But the one thing I want to see a little bit more out of you is a bit more aggression out there. Can, when, when do you feel like you need to turn that on and off? Yeah, it's hard, you know, because with long motos and stuff, it's not that I'm going to wear myself out, but you want to you want to stay smooth and out of trouble. And I've kind of had trouble with that, so I'm trying to stay more consistent rather than just go crazy and have something happen that you don't want to kind of... It's, it's a tough line to kind of judge what you're going to do, but you just got to go out there and do what you can. Young Brady's lining up on that Denny's Racing Kawasaki. Stick around for the gate drop. Welcome back to the Wastelands. Brian, we had a red flag situation. Second MX2 Moto, they have to restart this race. Number 149, Kyle McGlynn, went down on that back straight. The reason for the red flag, though, was to bring the quad out on the track to get him off. McGlynn a little dazed, got six in that first moto, the ride of his career. He's gonna have to wait till next year to show what he's got as he becomes a pro rider. Second MX2 Moto of the Day brought to you by FMF. Can you feel the power, Brian? Monster 30 board up. This is the final moto for the MX2S Championship. Guys warming up their tires there. They like to spin them on the cement to give them a little more traction, but you do sacrifice the edge. One rider, they're caught under the gate. Riders filtering through as they funnel into the chicane. Looks like number one, Jimmy Nelson, with a great start, and he gets that Royal Distributing Hole. Oh, yeah! But Jimmy Nelson passed quickly by fellow American rider Zach Patton on the 999. Yamaha out to lead trappers. Unbelievable. Patton got a great start in that second moto in Calgary. Brian picking up where he left off, leading Jimmy Nelson. I love the way he got him after Nelson got the hole shot. Number 235, Ben Evans in third place, and Tucker Hibbert gets a great start finally. Oh, Jimmy Nelson really threw into the lead. I think his bike might be a little faster than the privateer machine of Patton. But Patton with a nice start in second place as they file through the Scott Lockoff Cam. Did you see Hibbert blast through onto the tabletop? There he is. On the inside in third place, Evans taking a peek for the lead. Himmer not afraid of the big air. Coming from Snowcross, a factory, Arctic Cat Rider, and numerous gold medals at the X Games, he likes the big air. And look at Himmer, 103, takes a peek on the inside of Jimmy, gets the rut, but has to stay in third right now. This track very slick, riders opting inside and outside. They have to be careful, maintain their traction, Brian, looking for that loose stuff. Yes, and there goes Himmer into second place, and you can see the dark parts of the track where it's been watered, and the light parts where it has not. Evans takes another peek on Hibbert and gets some trash. Part of our action up front and these changing conditions, very sketchy for the rider. If you want to go outside, Brian, you have to carry speed. You go inside, it's the shorter line. The battle right now is for second place. It's hot and Kyle Beaton is in fourth place moving up on this packet. I could just see, look at Hibbert, cuts in. Evans had a bit of a problem on that shot. He stuff holds a position for now, but look at Kyle Beat, number 40 right there, joining the fray. Number 235, Ben Evans wasn't happy with his bike in the first moto. He and his brother made some changes for the second moto. I like where he is right now, but Tucker Hibbert wants to finish this MX2 West Series off with a win, Brian, and he is on a charge. 
The top four riders right now pushing ultra hard here in the early stages. There's Pete right now joining the mix with an outside shot at getting third overall in the series. The battle for 18th is hot. That's knotted on the inside. Takes care of Clegg. And we saw number 118, Corey Gravender, our enduro specialist out on the track in 18. Back to the front of the pack. Hibber taking a peek in on the low scrubber on the inside. Staying low, it's neck and neck right here. Who's going to get it? Hibbert has the advantage coming into the inside. He can do a block pass right here. No, denied. Love how aggressive Evans was getting into that inside line. You know that Hibbert wanted it. The battle for second now turning into three pack with Beaton, the danger man, coming up. Beaton's got the best seat of the house for this battle. Jimmy Nelson oh. actually not getting away. And a great aggressive move by number 103. All that monster energy starts Kawasaki, and that is Tucker Hibbert. Did you see the way he turned in and had a look at Evans when he went inside <laughs> on him? I love a that little bit of contact. Riding, yeah, yeah a little bit of contact, no doubt. As we get back in the package, boys funneling through those tabletops. This is for the lead, Brian. Hibbert on the inside. Look at how wide the track is. Wow, what a great move. Not many guys have been using that left. Hibbert with a great square off maneuver gets the power down. Jimmy Nelson, he's thinking championship, but he's got a lot of pride as well. I don't think he wants to lose to these guys. That's exactly it. Remember, Nelson has to finish fifth. And another number one plate for Jimmy. A big year in the offseason for Blackfoot switching from Honda to Yamaha. Makes no difference to Jimmy Nelson. He's still going to take the championship. But how about the finish right now if Kyle Beaton takes this win, which it looks like he will. He will finish in third place in this MX2 West. The first time he will be on the podium. Let's check the lines. Nelson coming in. Two corners to go. Here comes number 20, Kyle Beaton, with his first win in the MX2 West this season. Oh, he looks fast right now, Brian. He's not even slowing down to take that checkered flag. Number one, Jimmy Nelson, two corners from the championship. And with Eric Nye having a tough day, Kyle Beaton looks like he will finish third overall. What a comeback story for him this year, Travs. Number one, Jimmy Nelson, the repeat winner in MX2 West. And there's Kyle Beaton getting some congratulations for his first MX2 win. To the Yamaha leaderboard, Davenport has a great weekend, but not enough to beat out Beaten Kevin Urquhart and Weston Potter have a strong day. Nye is too little too late. For third place in the MX2 West, riding the number 20, Clearbrook Yamaha. Ladies and gentlemen, number 20, Kyle Beaton! <laughs> Kyle, here is your trophy, Kyle. Now, I know that uh, deep down in your heart you knew you should have been up here earlier, but let's face it, better late than never. Exactly. You know, I had this opportunity about a couple years ago, and uh, before the last round, I ended up breaking my thumb, so that kind of put an end to that. But, oh my god, did this feel good. Kind of took a while to get going at the beginning of the series, but uh, I ended up getting going, and I salvaged the third place, and it feels great. Number 235 on the privateer Honda, Ben Evans, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for Ben Evans. Ben, I don't think you had the race day that you wanted necessarily. You had some opportunity when you were out in the lead, and you were looking pretty good, but second place is not too bad in this championship thinking about the series on the whole yeah it's always tough to come in second you know it's like getting the first loser but uh, <laughs> you know jimmy's a respectable guy and uh you know i had some problems that first moto my brother really got my bike working a lot better i gotta really thank him and yeah i was a lot better that last moto i wish we'd uh, had a little more figured out but that's the way it goes you know Ladies and gentlemen, your 2007 MX2 West champion is number one, Jimmy Nelson, with the repeat win. It wasn't like last year where you were running away with moto wins and everyone was trying to catch you. You were battling hard for four rounds. Yeah, you know, everyone stepped it up. Uh, ben came in and he's riding great, right? And uh, Kyle's riding awesome here, man. I knew he was going to be tough here for sure. And. Uh, it's just been a tough series. Uh, they always say it's harder to defend it, and it uh, definitely was. You know, those guys were riding great. So uh, my hat's off to those guys, too. They did an awesome job. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can uh, come back next year on a 450 up into Canada again and uh, try to do what I can in that class. Congratulations to all three riders. Hang tight, MX1, next. to a couple guys yesterday, specifically uh, your mechanic from last year, and what he was saying about you is 
very, very easy to get along with, but a lot of personality wrapped up in there. Tell me about that. Well, yeah, you know, I like to keep a good smile at the face and keep good spirit. You know, I, the main reason is, like, I love being at the races. You know, I know it's serious, but, uh, you know, I'm serious in the heart when it comes down to that gate dropping. But in the pits, I like to be a little goofy. You know, I like to have a good time. And uh, it just makes me relax a little bit, you know, not as stressful. And uh, just makes me focus on racing, I think, a little bit more, have a little funner time with it. This is the final Moto of the Day from the Wastelands in Nanaimo, British Columbia. And this MX1 Moto will be brought to you by MX Performance Magazine the number one motocross magazine in the country, and the Monster 30 board is up with a little bit of a waggle. This is the time the riders are on pins and needles. Full focus on the gate. You see Colton Fasciati, a couple over from the boxes, time traps, and the gate is down. The long drag race to the white line. Let's have a look. Marco Dubé gets the Royal Distributing Hole shot. A pair of French Canadians won two with Simon Hohens in second place. Oh my, Brian, number 72, Drew Clegg in third. Another fantastic start for that Western boy. Clegg on fire this weekend. Gibson's in the mix, as is Josh Woods and the original Jeff Northrup showing a few wheels. This moto a little later in the day, you see the sun going behind the trees, throwing some shadows out to the track. That can be difficult. Yeah, Dubé handling it well out front. Beautiful style on Marco Dubé. He is a two-time Canadian national champ to the Scott Lockoff cam. You can see the big air the 450s are getting. Some of the guys through the back not able to do that step-on, step-off tabletop. How about this, Brian? Number five, Marco Dubé has been waiting for a start like this. He is in the lead, but look at the pressure that Gibson is putting on Holmans. And Holmans, likewise, is looking ahead. Oh, Cole Fasciati, a dreadful weekend. He had the wind in the bag in the first one, got a flat tire. Here he's dished out and tweaked the front end. He's trying to get that front wheel pointing straight. Got into a little altercation with Blair Morgan in corner three. Back to the battle with Drew Clegg. He's got his hands full of NorCal, and it looks like Andrew Boleyn with a terrific start. With Boleyn riding two classes today, he has got to be feeling the fatigue of four motos up here in the heat. Like in the battle I'm seeing right now, the Woods on the gas, big time passes Clegg, puts him into fourth. Clegg not giving up around the outside. Look at this, Clegg has the advantage. Hold it on, Drew. No, he lets Josh Woods through. It's got to be intimidating for a rider like Clegg to be up there mixing it up with these big name riders. Josh Woods now up into fourth place. Clegg looking good in fifth. Colton Fasciati in 34th, Brian. He's got to put his head down, charge, get into the mix and make some points. He's all alone out there. Sometimes it's hard to ride when you're alone. He's just going to kind of get into the mode and find his rhythm, see if he can get into the top 20. Because those are valuable points come championship. This corner gets his drive, though, makes the pass. Number 42, Mason Phillips, all the way up from New Zealand. And he's good friends with pro circuit racer Ben Townley. Carpenter up to seventh, Phillips and eight as they go through the rhythm section. I like where Phillips is on the inside. Oh no, Brian, number 25, Tyler Medaglia is down. He was in sixth place. That one's gotta hurt. Oh, he's gotta leave some skin behind there. His forearms are probably still oozing right now. The battle for third is raging though, because Gibson has found NorCal yet again. And these two went at it hard in the first oh. photo. NorCal in the red on the outside. Look oh. at that aggressive <laughs> move through that middle run. Working overtime for third place drives awesome riding. Brian, we always talk about a aggression on the track. You have to be aggressive in motocross if you want to make a pass. We saw that from NorCal. But Lynn with a problem falls back to 10th. And now Fasciati goes inside just before the finish line and gets inside the top 10 from a horrible start. Fasciati, one of the most deceiving riders to watch. He's so smooth. Sometimes you wonder how fast he's going. And then you look at the time sheets. A lot of times he's the fastest guy out there. Our leader, number four, Simon Holman's going through the motor van switchbacks. A little inside line in that Royal Distributing Corner there, Brian, as they drop into the valley. Uh, really great kind of Euro section as it gets rough. Dubé hops through. Carpenter moving up on Josh Woods. Looks like he's got him. Let's see if he hits that. Oh, my goodness. Carpenter throws it away. That was fifth place he was passing for. He didn't lose any positions. He's still in six. Looks like he wanted to get on that inside line, Brian, and hit that geo like he did the lap before. Yeah. Number 14, North Cal and Gibson get their last lap flag to our leader, number four, Simon Homans, on that Simon Homans racing Yamaha. Coming in, Brian, on his final approach to get his first MX1 win. <laughs> he looks elated right now. Simon Holmans has won MX2 East Championship under his belt for Yamaha. Coming in for his first ever premier victory. He's beside himself. His mechanic, Pat Sear, all over him. Well deserved for this pair. They have been together racing for years. Now they've got an MX1 victory.
Welcome back to Nanaimo. Marco Dubé accepts his Royal Distributing Whole Shot Award. Great to see Marco in the mix this weekend. Northrop shows well, as does Gibson. Paul Carpenter does what he has to do for his points. Mason Phillips, Cole Fasciati, and Drew Clegg round it out. Unbelievable the way that you came on today. What is the difference even from last week to this week? Because this week you had it all going on. Everything was working for you. I don't know, man. It's just, uh, I don't know. This week, you know, I was really bummed out after Calgary. And since the beginning of the season, it goes very bad. And I said, okay, you know what? This is going to happen. Put my stuff together and focus, put my head down and charge as hard as I could. And uh, first moto, I, I kind of got in front by surprise and then I knew I had the speed. So second moto, I just got a good start. I said, I, I got to go for it. So I went for it. The fans are going crazy. Two-time Canadian champion Marco Dubé, number five, second in the second MX1 moto. Marco, I couldn't be happier for you, my man. You had a great race. You got the whole shot. You led for a while. Still in second place in the points. You're looking strong. Uh, that's right. Uh, I feel really good in my KTM Pirelli uh, bike. Uh, plus Mario helped me out because the first model, first model we had a little issue with the engine. We were pretty stressed about it, but uh, by the second model, those all the mechanics from KTM helped help us out, helped Mario, and uh, we put a good bike together and uh, pulled a little shot and uh, finished second. To the MX2 West final point standings, Davenport slightly edged out, as is Eric Nye. Great showing for Urquhart, Boyer, guys like McGlynn and Sharon hang tough. To the MX1 class, after six and nine rounds, you know your leader, Paul Carpenter. Marco Dubé solid in second, Fasciati down to fourth, Was still in seventh, Keast in ninth, and Lockhart in tenth. Thank you for joining us for a great day of racing here at the Monster Energy Nationals. Holmans takes a ruse of champagne right in the eyes. He better wear his goggles on the podium next time, Travs. <laughs> you have been watching the 2007 Monster Energy Motocross Nationals. Brought to you by Motovan, your source for power sports parts and accessories. And Royal Distributing, Canada's power sports leader. For Brian Coster and Mark Travers, hey, see ya!